Hello my friends and welcome to Figure Friday. Today we're going to be reviewing another die body figure and today is the Polynean number 6. Polynean Motoroido Pinku. That translates over to Polynean Motoroid Pink. With that in mind, seeing that they classified the motoroid as a color, we can imagine that there are other motoroids in the series. There is the other motoroid cop version and a motoroid that is actually an aquatic version as well that is coming out in a couple months. So get your pre-orders in on that one now if you'd like. And stay tuned today because we're not only reviewing the figure, but we do have some additional accessories for her that were released later. Both the face swap set as well as the decal set that applies to these faces and allows them to have a little bit more character are both going to be things that we go over today in our review. With that said, let's take a look at the box. As per the usual, we have the Motoroid Pink on the front, as well as a low opacity of her being cute and making a very happy, sort of almost frustratedly happy face on the side, which is also on the side as well. On the back, we have quite a few poses as well, her showing off her robo booty, her showing off her sirens above her robo booty, her hair, which is sometimes covered up by this visor, some more robo butt, some pistol action, some sword action, some cute pose action, and there's all of her accessories. Finally, this side, she looks rather happy, presenting her hands up as if she was maybe even about to clap. And let's open this thing up. As per the usual, we have a window display when we open up the figure, and man, is there quite a bit in here. First, let's remove that film. Now we can see everything in all of its glory. Two really awesome anime images of the character right there, as well as her accessories right next to it, and some more pictures of her with some accessories and how they tie into the figure. And of course, we have the actual figure in the window on the right side here, which is actually... And of course, we have the figure on the right side of the box in the window looking really awesome. Three faces, additionally with her main face, giving her four faces, an alternate hair piece that will show her hair rather than her visor, some hands, and of course, there's some stuff behind her. So let's pop this figure open. And this is a bit different. There's a piece of instructional paperwork in here that talks about how to handle the figure. Much more information than we've gotten in the previous one. It talks about how to heat the joints, how the universal joints have a separation in the middle and they're designed to move a specific way. And if of course they're not moving one way, you have to rotate. A lot of rudimentary stuff, but it's appreciated that it's there. One thing I really like about this already is that there's not a ton of tape on it. Normally, there's tape in the seams, tape in the back that would disallow it to open up, and it's just unnecessary amounts of extra procedure that you don't really need because this is designed well enough packaging-wise that it's not floating around in the box. So I'm already happy about that, but damn, does she look great. So let's open this up. So inside of her plastic, we can already see she has quite a bit to offer. The figure itself is very large, very solid looking, and she comes with a few hands, just two closed hands that can hold accessories, two open hands, of course, to fists that she already has attached, three really cute faces, a sort of frustrated face that you could also probably see as a cute kind of happy face, a very incredibly happy face with blushing, as well as a semi-blushing neutral face as well, and that hair piece additionally. Now, if you were wondering the difference between her stock face and this one here, you can maybe see it in there, but there's a little bit of white in the eyes that are on the face attached to her head already, whereas these ones are a bit more dead and blank. So there's something. And of course, her additional accessories are a pair of fins that will act sort of like tails off the back of her head, a gun, and the hilt to her saber, as well as the saber itself, and the standard Polynesian hexagonal base. The pistol's pretty simple, but it does what it needs to do. It's just a very basic pistol, and that's all it needed to be. The saber is very similar in the fact that it's literally just a blue stick coming out of a gray stick, but it does the job. It's exactly what it needs to be. Very simple accessories for simple-looking figures. The tails that act like her hair are a bit rigid and stiff. You don't want to try to bend these, but I really don't see why you would. And here's the actual figure, and I think this absolutely looks amazing. There's such a good bit of chunk to her. She looks really satisfying. Those big thick thighs with those cuffs and those little armor plates on the side look really great. Her boots are big. She's got a nice heel and a nice cuff rounded off at the edge to give that a nice solid bit of heft. Her waist has a nice dip to it because it's thin, but then you have that huge hover skirt that looks really awesome. And the chest is tiny, quaint, but it does what it needs to do. That little siren is a wonderful touch. 
Her elbows, very mechanical, her shoulders, very broad, almost kind of like a Mega Man character. And her hat is super cute. That little visor flips into that little fin, very cute accessory. And the tail on the back is another siren of sorts. You can lift that, it has a small hinge joint, and I think it adds a nice little bit to the back, whereas the back is decently detailed as well. Minimal paint on this one, I'm noticing, but that's good. There's only small accents here, 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 some in the skirt, and some in the waist, but so far as I can tell, no real paint errors, which is good because I've had some in the past with these figures. The face is simply wonderful. Simple, clean, elegant, but still very expressive in a way. Very android-like, almost kind of an automaton from typical science fiction, but still very personality-filled and very cutesy. The twin tails very simply just plug right into here and they both come on polyneon joints. The great thing about these tails is that they're on a swivel at both where they connect to the joint and where they connect at the head. So you can get quite a bit of motion out of these and it allows you to really pose them however you like, which is nice. They're easy enough to plug in. I did not struggle with these. They're decently snug enough so that they're not going to just move on their own, but you will not break the figure this time plugging it in. Just make sure to twist it as you do. That does a great job of filling her out in the back. It really adds a bit more heft to the back of her, and it really opens her up to give her a much more broad design. From the front, it looks absolutely perfect, and especially because you can move these around, you can really get some awesome looks out of her. And before we continue, I have got to say, this is some of the most solid build quality I have seen on one of these figures. Since I started messing with this, there has not been a single part that fell off. In the past, I've had some problems with the other figures, mostly with Yume, where parts would fall off and the figure would just sometimes fall apart, but it's common with some of the other ones too. These figures are easily customizable, so they do come apart pretty easily. That being said, some of the other figures just fall apart constantly when you're trying to move them around. So far, I've had no problems with Motoroid here, and I'm very happy to say that because it's a great big design and I could see a lot of points where things might fall off, but I haven't had anything happen yet, so I'm getting nervous to see what the articulation is like, but let's check it out. So going forward, you have to understand that because she's so chunky, I am probably going to have a little bit of trouble posing her, but let's just try her out. The shoulder is where I'm most afraid, but if you move it up and down, you get a decent range there. You do get some side to side and a swivel. So yeah, that's fine because as usual, this figure is on the many polyneon ball peg joints that we have and they do a fine job of keeping this figure well articulated. Her head of course is on the same kind of joint, up and down, we get some swivel and of course you can kind of roll it around how you like. As I said earlier, the tails also have the same ball peg joints so it can move quite a bit and it also spins at both points of the actual place where it connects and where it connects to the joint itself. Her little butt sirens can move up and down on a hinge joint and that's perfectly fine. Of course her waist joint is another ball peg joint if you can see in there and that allows for her to go back and forward and it gives a swivel of course as well and you can roll it to how you like. Same thing with her elbow, it is pretty much unbothered by that extra chunk which is great and her wrist has no problem moving around the hand as well as with the leg, since the skirt is so open, you don't have to worry about not being able to move her leg in and out, which is wonderful. It's a nice tight joint. You can swivel it, you can roll it around however you like. Same with the knee, and the same with the, uh-oh, not so much with the foot. The foot is on the same ball peg joint, but that extra chunk does, oh, <gasps> This one's a little weird. That ball peg joint looks to have been glued into her ankle. It'll go right back in, but it really doesn't give you much. You can get the up and down out of it. Uh, you can get a very slight swivel, but it's not the best time. So I would be careful with her feet, but you're really not gonna do any damage if you actually get that ball peg out of the ankle. It might actually help you in the long run. So honestly, articulation wise, you are looking great, Motoroid. As you can see, she has a delicious little robo butt under there, but let's get that thing out. Remove her waist from the joint. Just to be super safe, remove the siren from where it connects. Then remove the skirt. You'll see she has a little hole there. That's where the siren plugs in, but this is pretty snug when you first get it, so I would take everything else off before removing it. It almost looks like it has a little bit of glue on it, but I don't really know. Either way, now we get that nice, delicious robo butt. And we get to see a little bit more of the front, which actually looks pretty good without the skirt. It's very slimming. 
And when you plug her back in, that's what she looks like. And I gotta say, it's actually pretty good looking. And with the whole body, damn, that butt is looking fine. Dang, girl, look at all that. No, but seriously though, she looks pretty good without that skirt on. So I was able to actually attach the hilt of her blade to the tip of her gun and make it sort of look like a silencer. Not sure if you're supposed to do that, but it looks pretty cool. And man, does she just look great. The blank look on the face almost really adds to the fact that she seems sort of like a crossing guard to me. I don't know how many crossing guards get guns, but I mean, this one does. So far, I really don't want to complain about anything. And here we have her ready to strike with her saber. She looks really awesome with the hair frilled out like that. Kind of reminds me of a Dilophosaurus. Damn, she just poses perfectly. That dead stare, the saber's nice and bright blue. It contrasts well with all the pink. I love this. I'm having a really hard time trying to find anything that I don't like about this figure. Some of her joints have been loose, but it hasn't affected any of the posing, and it really hasn't affected my enjoyability of this figure. So far, she's looked great from pretty much all angles, and I am struggling to find anything that I dislike. I guess if pink isn't your color, that could be a thing, but it seems like a petty nitpick to me. Here I went ahead and used her hair to make them sort of look like bunny ears, and I gave her a little bit of a peace sign, and this is really adorable. It works really well. She looks good in a happy mood, and she looks good with the serious sort of pistol or saber. Seriously, I love these very basic anime faces with just the arrow eyes. It looks perfect on her because she already has that sort of dead look to her, and these just give it enough to make her look like a very expressive character. And there she is, a bit more embarrassed, telling you, don't look at that robot booty, you filthy robosexual. Oh, but you know we gonna look, mama. So now I need to bring you up here a little bit to show you the next piece of the review. Polyneon face part set, Motoroid, as well as the face decal set. So for those of you that don't know what these are, basically they are water decal sets and blank faces. Now these aren't new, they've come with a lot of figures over the years, and what they'll do is they'll give you a blank face and these water decals that you actually have to wet. Cut out the one you want, wet it, put it on the face, and let it dry. The instructions say that you can put a matte coating over top of it to make it look best, but we don't have all that time right now. But these are pretty cool. It actually allows you to give her different color eyes or just a specific expression if you wanted to have a double of it. We've got some water here, so let's see if we can't do this. Personally, I think she would look good with a set of bright yellowish orange eyes. So let's take a set of those and put them on. So we're about to cut that one out right there. And there we have it, we cut out our piece. As you can see, we went ahead and put the decal in the water. And then it gets tricky. They actually come off of the sheet and you kind of have to finagle them and finesse them your own way. I'm just gonna try to plop it right on the face. So while it's wet, you can still actually set it. We're gonna try to do that while we're watching on camera, but uh, give me just a sec. So you really gotta let them wet and soak, and then you have a little bit of time to actually move them across the face. Alternatively, you can get them onto either maybe a pair of tweezers, or even onto the nail of your finger and then try to get them on. And that'll help you a lot with positioning. And there you have it. I put on the extra face and I think it looks pretty decent. Disclaimer, I have never done one of these face decals before. So that was my first time. And yeah, there's probably better ways of doing it, but it works. And they give you a lot of extra faces and they give you a decent amount of decals. So you could do this and you have room to screw it up. I actually already did once. But that's Polyneon number six, Motoroid Pink. I actually really enjoyed her. I went into this thinking she was pretty good looking, but I didn't think I'd like her quite as much as I did. She was a lot of fun. She was easy to pose, very solid build quality, almost no paint errors whatsoever, and a decent amount of accessories, enough to make her fun looking. I'm satisfied with this one. If you want the extra parts, they're actually pretty cheap. The faces themselves are about $5, and the decals are an additional 5 Give or take a bit of change here or there, depending on where you get them, you'd probably spend at most $6 per pack. So total about $10 to $12 to give her a bunch of additional faces. I think that's a pretty fair price, and they're optional. It's not like you need them, because she comes with four faces. Still, it's appreciated, and I do like the fact that they continue to grow this line in both the figures as well as the accessories. Personally, I think Motoroid was a great addition to this line, and I had a lot of fun with her, and I'm 
happy to see that there's more of them coming out. This figure's pretty easy to get. There's a lot of them on eBay, but they're a little bit higher up there. You're probably going to spend at least $100 to maybe $110 on this figure. That's quite a bit extra, but if you really gotta have her, uh, you know, that's pretty much what you're gonna pay. Happy hunting if you do want her. Either way, I do like this figure a lot, and I would give her easily an 8 out of 10. She was a lot of fun, very easy to pose, very solid build quality, and almost no errors on her whatsoever. Stay tuned because I actually have another video coming up with a couple figures and actually some additional accessories coming out soon. I have the whole line of these figures and I'm reviewing them every week. Come on back for another Figure Friday next week or come back for Weeaboo Wednesday. Either way, if you want to see any more figure videos, I have some linked in the top here and there's a playlist where you can watch the rest of those. Thank you so much for watching. Happy hunting, keep on collecting, and have an awesome day.